Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and on the bench today we have a customer's Ham International Jumbo that was sent in for some work. So let's see what we can find and hopefully bring this radio back to its former glory. But before we start don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website and let's get started. So, the first thing I notice, it's only got the two wire mains lead with its European plug with no earth. So that's coming off and getting replaced. So we've got the lid off, having a look inside. And everything looks okay. Looks pretty much untouched until we have a look at the back and we see some additions at the back so we have a, a wire that drifts off underneath which shouldn't be there so we'll get rid of that old antenna relay in there RF bias hasn't been done neither is the FM audio or anything like that so yeah there's plenty of improvements and the bleep it's definitely one I've not seen before. That's um, definitely not the usual Ham International bleep. But this seems to be one of the very early Ham International jumbos. Obviously, there's the power switch that we all love when we turn the radio over and we've got it plugged into the mains and we get a nice blast off it. So the wires from the top are connecting to the power supply with a nice piece of red tape there's a couple of other wires here and there two wires going off to the frequency counter plug or socket should we say and obviously our lovely exposed mains leads inside there's no way this would ever pass C certification these days but, you know, if you, if you haven't got the bottom off, it's perfectly safe. And at least with an earth connection, if the chassis does go live, then you are protected. Not like it is now. So we'll start off by removing these extra wires that are just flapping about in the breeze at the top. And because we because we can we're just gonna snip them out of the way and have a look what's inside this because it doesn't seem to be just a join in the wire there's a piece of Vero board and the 5 volt regulator so maybe sometime in the past, somebody was powering something that required 5 volts. But anyway, it's gone. It's been removed. It is no more. And we'll remove this mains lead. Just to get it out of the way whilst I work on the radio. And we will fit a proper mains lead with a earth on it later on but for the moment we're just going to cut it out of the way so it doesn't get in the way whilst we are constantly turning the radio over whilst we do our repairs to it so I'll leave a little bit of the original wires on so I know which one connects where and I'll power the radio using my bench power supply and as you can see, this one has a Vox switch where the high and low power would be. So I believe this is a really early Mark 1 jumbo. But I also believe that this switch does nothing, so very strange. Anyway, um, the customer said that the, um, the tune wouldn't work. So I've got a 1K tone on my generator. 
and the shifts are working so I reckon we have a alignment problem where he couldn't tune in the signals and actually hear what they were saying but the KC shift and the clarifier definitely work so let's carry on with the modifications or improvements should we say so first thing out with the VCO because we're going to be fitting a voltage feed and FM audio VCO in this which will give better stability and we're also going to replace the antenna relay with one from um, a design from Steph at Hammintonational.eu which he, he has allowed me to reproduce over here in the UK so out with that relay that likes to go dirty and out with the VCO So there's my voltage feed VCO. So we're going to drop that into place. And we're going to fit the antenna relay, which just drops in just like so. And we also don't need these two controls in the middle as these were for setting the VCO voltage. But as we're using a voltage feed VCO, this voltage is now fixed. So these aren't needed. And I can use one of the holes to supply the power to the VCO. And whilst we're in there, we're going to remove the parts that we need to remove for the FM audio. So that's those three parts. We're going to put a 104 capacitor in there. And we've connected the white wire to the junction that we should do. And the red wire goes to the 9 volts. Now we need to link out one of the resistors on the FM deviation pot. And the easiest way to do that as we just scratch up a little bit of the print there and then we can put a solder bridge across it just like so so we'll just tin it up get a nice connection and then drop a solder bridge across that's good enough. Now let's set the VCO voltage. So there we go, we have it in lock. So let's go across the bands, make sure that we have a acceptable voltage across all the bands. Which we have. between two and four volts just for the three bands is more than enough. Okay, that's that out of the way. Now we're going to do the RF output transistors biasing resistor, which we are going to change for a 15 ohm. We'll take that out and we will replace it with a nice 15 ohm and obviously solder it back into place and now we can set the final bias to around 0.7 of a volt so SSB, no audio, around about 0.7 of a volt, fantastic. 
Now the customer wanted the frequency counter output reinstating. So these wires seem to drift off to the other side and somebody's rewired them. So we're going to snip off those wires. And we're going to reinstate the frequency counter output. And those pieces of sellotape are really crusty. So I reckon that this has been done many, many years ago. But at least whoever's done it has left the original components there. Should it ever want it to be reinstated, just like it is now. So we'll reconnect the resistor and the capacitor back up. That should get our frequency counter output working again. So we'll just tin up the ends of the wires just to refresh the solder. And resolder this socket. So that's the resistor in place. Now the capacitor to the case. Screwed back in. Fantastic. And those wires were going off to the signal meter. So it looks like somebody had a external signal meter on this. But that's not being used. So those wires can be removed. And we're also going to change the two offset capacitance trimmers there because that one CT4 is always known for being a bit twitchy, especially that style of it. So we're going to replace them with new ones so we can set the set the carriers correctly. So we'll just desolder those, push them through. And then we can replace them. There we go. So we'll pull out CT5. We'll pull out CT4. And we've replaced them just like so. And solder them back into place. Just like that. So those just need a setup now. So with the frequency counter on the test point, we're going to set 10695 and 10692. So we'll get those as close as we can. On 10692, lovely. Now we're just going to check the 10240 whilst we've got the frequency counter in the area. And we'll set the 10240. Lovely, that'll do just nicely. And we're also going to broaden the bandwidth of T4. So what we need to do is we need to make a small cut to the center leg of T4, and then we wire it to the end leg, just like so. That widens the bandwidth of that coil and gives a better spread of power across the bands. Now, on this one, there is no links from the front board to the main board, only this black wire. And on the later ones, they've put links across. So we're going to add some 
just for improved improved negative um, rail. So I'm just tinning up the places that I'm going to solder the wire link to. It's a nice piece of stiff wire. And we're going to make the links that go across. Don't know whether it actually makes any difference, but like I say on the later ones, this was always done. So whilst we're here, we're going to do that. Make sure we've got a nice healthy solder connection on them. That'll do for that one. And there's three extra links fitted. So that should improve matters in that area. Now for the mains lead, I'm going to be using this cabled land, mounting it internally, and we'll drill out the hole with the hole cutter. We've secured the cabled land to the rear of the set, having it facing inwards like that. We've got some shrink sleeving over the the live and neutral from the mains lead because we're going to put some shrink sleeving over this fuse holder even though close by is two live terminals but you know it shows I care So there's our new wires fitted. We'll put some heat shrink over them and then we're going to put some heat shrink over the whole thing. Make it look nice and tidy. Now let's do the other one. So as you can see, I'm pulling the cable there. It's not moving. That's nice and secure. We've also wired up the earth. So just doing a continuity check from the earth pin on the plug to the chassis. You can see we've got, got an ohm of resistance. Okay, that's nice and safe. At least now, if the chassis does go live, the fuse should blow and not send everything else live. So we'll check the output from the power supply. This is the, the onboard power supply, set that to 13.8. And we'll check the FM demodulator. And that just needs a little bit of adjustment just to get rid of that little bit of a flat bottom on the waveform. So that's all good. And there we have it. A jumbo. I always do, do like working on the old jumbos. It's just a shame they're too big. But anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me coffee, have a look at my website, microchips.net. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.